yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial for you. And to continue on with my tutorials of Tunisian crochet, today I'm going to give you a bit of a two for one. I'm going to show you how to Tunisian crochet the knit stitch and the purl stitch. Now, for this example, I used a typical worsted weight yarn, a four ply worsted weight yarn, and up here I did the knit stitch, and as you can see, it looks just like knit stitches. And on the back, kind of looks like purl stitches, if you will. It's a bit more dense, and also the knit stitch, it has a great tendency of curling, very much like the stockinette stitch in actual knitting, although this is a lot thicker, I will say that. But it has the very same appearance because you got all these lovely V's going on here. Now down here we have the purl stitch and front and back look very, very similar. Also, what I've noticed is that as far as the purl stitch, this is very much like the garter stitch, where it's a basically a purl bump on both sides. And this does not curl at all, as you can see, which I really like. And uh, it's you know just as easy as doing the garter stitch if you were to knit. So I'm going to show you how to do both of these stitches. Um, you know, give you, like I said, a two for one. And so what you're going to need is a Tunisian crochet hook. Now, for this example, I'm using a size L crochet hook, eight millimeter. And I find that this works really well with your typical worsted weight yarns. Uh, you know, you can go up, down, however, which way you want, um, you know, depending upon the gauge that you have with your stitching, your tension, as well as whatever kind of yarn you're using. So without further ado, let's get started. Now for this example, I'm going to be using another worsted weight yarn and we're going to get right into it. And you can do however many chains you want. I'm just going to do a bunch just to give you an idea of a typical swatch. So just do your chaining as you normally would, and this is actually going to be started in the same fashion as if you are going to do the Tunisian simple stitch. And I'm going to put a link for the simple stitch in the description box down below. So if you find that I'm going a bit too fast, or if you want to see the very, very basic methodology of Tunisian crochet, you can check out that link. So I just did a bunch of chains just so that I could show you what I'm doing. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the back loop of each chain because you have these two front loops, the top and the bottom, and then there's the back. And if you go in through the back, back bump, it makes the bottom edge that much cleaner, especially if you're going to be joining pieces together. I will say that. So I'm just going to go in through the bottom bump of the chain as I go along. And I do not recall if I did this with the Tunisian simple stitch, but if I didn't, well, this is another variation on how to start your Tunisian crochet. And if I did, well, then it'll be sort of a refresher. I can't quite recall. I apologize. All right, so just did pulling up a loop into each of those back bumps. Like I said, just like you would as far as starting off any sort of Tunisian crochet, you have to have all of your loops pulled up. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through that first loop, then yarn over and pull through two loops, 
yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so on all the way. So we did a casting on and then a return pass. And that is exactly what you would do if you were to do the Tunisian simple stitch. Now, as you can see, I have these vertical bars and we're going to be working with these. So to do the knit stitch, we're going to start with the knit stitch and then I'm going to show you how to do the purl stitch. So for the knit stitch, what you're going to do is you're going to go underneath the vertical bar and then I'm just going to show you. See how there's this space here? You've got the bar and then you have the space. We're going to go underneath the bar and then through that space. Typically, if you were doing a simple Tunisian stitch, basically you're just going to be going underneath the bar and then pulling a loop up. But for the knit stitch, you're going to go underneath the bar and then through that space, through to the back. And then you pull a loop from the back to the front and past that bar. And that is a knit stitch. So you can already see you have a V going on. So then you're just going to do the exact same thing going underneath that bar, then through that space. I'll show you again. Through that space right there. So underneath the bar, through the space to the back, pull up a loop, and then do another one underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop, underneath the bar, to the back, pull up a loop, underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop, underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop, underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop, underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop. And then on the last one, what I'm going to do is instead of going underneath that bar into the back, there really is no back. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm just going to grab the bar and that extra little loop right there. And that'll give me a nice edge, like so. And then we're going to do the return pass. <clears throat> so to do the return pass again, yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so on until we reach the very beginning again. All right, and then we're going to do the exact same thing for another row. And it can be a little tricky if you're using a small size hook to actually see the spaces because the stitching tends to get very dense. So if you're going to be doing the knit stitch, you might want to use a bigger gauge hook. So as you can see, underneath the bar, and then to the back, pull up a loop, pull it to the front. Underneath the bar, to the back, pull up a loop. Underneath the bar, to the back, underneath those stitches there. Pull up a loop. Underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop. See? Underneath the bar, to the back, pull up a loop. Underneath the bar and to the back, 
pull up a loop underneath the bar and to the back, pull up a loop underneath the bar and to the back, pulling up a loop. And then again, at the very end, going underneath both of these loops on the side here. And also by doing that, you know, and of course pulling up that loop, um, by doing that, this edge also is easy. As you can see, we've got what looks like knit stitches or a slip stitch knit edge on the side here so that if you need to connect one piece to another piece, it's that much easier because we have these V's all along the bottom here and also along the side here and along the side here. So it becomes very, very easy if you wanted to do a block of this to join it to another block. If you wanted to do, say, a whip stitch or something like that, or there is, of course, entrelock, which is something that I would like to show in a future video. So again, we're going to do the return pass once more for the knit stitch. All right, so return pass, pull through one loop, then pull through two loops. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and two, two, pull through two, and then pull through two. And that's how you do the knit stitch. And you can already see we have these lovely little V's going on here. And yes, this does have quite a tendency of curling. However, like I said, with the purl stitch, it doesn't curl because your stitches are on the front as opposed to um, the tension being strictly, you know, pulled towards the front. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> it works out. I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to do the purl stitch. Now before, the yarn was always in the back. For the purl stitch, the yarn needs to be in front of the needle, just like if you were doing a purl stitch with actual knitting, um, the yarn would be in the front. So for the yarn to be in the front to do this stitch, I found that works best and what works the easiest is simply to put the yarn literally in front of the needle and then to enter underneath the bar with the yarn being in the front of the needle right there and then pull it to the front like so, pull it to the side and then to pin the yarn down like so so that there isn't too much tension on the yarn itself. And then pull the yarn through that loop, like so. So again, the yarn is in the front, and you can hold the yarn on the, the hook. Go underneath that bar, pull the yarn to the side there, and then pull that loop through. And as you can see, we've got purl bumps right here and right here. So it's yarn to the front, hold the yarn, go underneath that bar to the side and pull up a loop. Yarn to the front of the needle, hold it, go through, yarn to the side, and then pull a loop through. And you can always adjust the, the tension of your purl bumps. See, we have knit stitches down here, and we've got purl bumps up here. So yarn to the front, hold it. Go underneath that bar, 
yarn to the side. You can hold the yarn if you like, and then pull up a loop. Yarn to the front. You can hold it if you like. Go underneath that bar, yarn to the side, pull up a loop. Yarn to the front, go underneath the bar, <clears throat> yarn to the side, pull up the loop. Yarn to the front, go through the bar, yarn to the side, pull up a loop, and then into that very last bar on the side, you can do the exact same thing as before, where you're just going in like so, you know. Or you can do another purl, if you will, yarn to the front, hold it, go through both of those loops there, yarn to the side, and then pull through both, either or, you know. It's a matter of personal preference, I think. And then, so we're going to do another return pass. So pulling through one loop, then pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, all the way until we reach the end. Easy enough. There we go. Just pull out some more yarn. And then I'm going to do another pass. All right. See how we have this ridged bump edge going on here? Those are all pearls. All right, so again, yarn in front of the needle going underneath the bar, yarn to the side, and pull a loop through, yarn in front of the needle, hold it, go underneath that bar, yarn to the side, and then pull a loop through. Now, as far as holding the yarn, um, if you have a lot of tension, I would advise it. However, if you can get comfortable doing the stitch without having too much of a death grip, as I often do, you can do it without actually holding the yarn. So just going underneath. And then pulling up another loop, like so. So it is possible, although it is, I would say, more comfortable to actually hold the yarn so it doesn't slip all over the place. See, I can do it, but you know what? It is a lot easier if you just hold it, I have found and you do get a greater sense of control with the actual stitch. Last one. There you go. Ta da! See? Two rows, two beautiful rows of pearl bumps, and two rows of beautiful V shaped knit stitches. And you do the return pass, first pulling through one, and then you pull through two loops all the way back on the return pass. The return pass, in this case, is always the same. There are other stitches where the return pass is a little different, I'm sure, but 
for all intents and purposes for what we're doing right now. There you go. Knit stitches and purl stitches all in a row. Mm. So listen, I really hope that you found this little tutorial two for one helpful and uh, that it inspires you to, you know, think outside of your typical crochet box and perhaps give Tunisian a bit of a try. And uh, I would like to continue on with this Tunisian series and do more stitches and so on and so forth. So if you found this little two for one tutorial helpful, please hit the like button down below. Your support means a, a great deal to me. I really, really appreciate it very, very much. Um, and also, um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, what have you, you know, please do so in the comment section down below. I like hearing from you guys very, very much. Also, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so because I try to post videos as often as I can. And that is the phone, of course, right as I'm doing my outro. <laughs> so listen, until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.